Hey friends, I said I would talk today about gut health and um, some of the things we have done to help repair. Um, in our case, it, the biggest issue was leaky gut. And so um, let me back up. So when Nathan was just a child, he was constantly getting chest um, like pneumonia and so would have to take an antibiotic. So he was quite young, taking an antibiotic a few times but it just seemed to do enough to throw off a gentle, like a sensitive microbiome. Already you inherit what your mom has and, and I was coming into parenting newly aware of my need to take probiotics and rebuild my gut health um, after really decimating it and getting a severe autoimmune problem. So, um, so Nathan's health was fairly decent for a while, but um, around six or seven, he started to get rashes on his body. And so we went to check that out there. They just gave us a cream at the office. So we thought, ah, oh, the body must be responding to something. What is it that's bothering his system? So we went ahead and got him tested for allergies and found out that peanuts and, um, gluten no, peanuts and dairy were his issue back then. So once we cut those out, the rashes disappeared and he started to feel a lot better. So we just thought, okay, he can't have peanuts and dairy. Well then, as time went on, he started to have more problems with other foods. Now it was wheat, then it was corn. And by the time he got to grade nine and he was having late night hockey and then early morning school, his immune system was really wearing down and we could really see it with Nathan like he started to just get um, more and more problems with um, brain fog fatigue uh, he would catch everything that was going around and so we got some blood work done and um, sent it to my naturopath as well um, and she was going to work with us on some dietary things so we found out that he was really low in his white blood cell count and really low in his red blood cell count. Uh, they were just too small a size. Um, and so she had a few things to suggest to kind of uh, some glandulars to kind of rebuild part of his system. So we worked with her a little bit and then um, we found out there were other problems. So he started to get more and more allergies. And so as I started to look into this, I was like, okay, what creates food allergies? And often food sensitivities come from a problem in how our digestive system is working. So our digestive system is just one cell thick. It's not a very thick wall. It needs to be quite permeable because that's how we get all our vitamins and our minerals from our food into our bloodstream. And so, but what happens with leaky gut is those cells are supposed to be tightly knit next to each other, right? Um, but what happens is some of the lectin foods like um, nightshades, um, that would be potato, tomato, peppers, um, wheat, uh, some of the glutens, they start to, on some people, they seem to create little holes in the whole digestive tract. So then it starts to look more like this. So rather than just having your food come through and get absorbed in, into the body, some of those foods that are not digesting well are now getting passed into the bloodstream. And so the body reacts to them and says, whoa, wait a second, we're not supposed to have undigested food particles in here. And so it chases them as though they were the bad guy. Um, so it's just a symptom of a problem. And so we knew we needed to get to the root of it. So um, I just started to do some more research. I realized part of it for Nate might be he eats really fast and so, uh, is he digesting well? Because they say you are what you eat, but really I would say you are what you absorb. Um, you are what you can actually take in of the nutrients that you're putting in your body. So um, so we tried to slow down his eating a little bit, but we also realized he probably needed a, a digestive cleanse just to sort of clean house. And one of the things with the microbiome is we also know if you use antibiotics, then it not only wipes out the bad guys, but it can also really deplete your good bacteria. And your good bacteria are really important. They, they're they the guys that are like defending you. Um, and 
they keep yeast in check. Yeasts naturally occur in the body. They just live there and they generally are benign. They don't seem to bother us. Um, but if our good bacteria gets out of whack, then those yeasts can really start to multiply. And as they multiply, they are really good at poking holes in our digestive tract and creating havoc and more problems. So we thought, okay, let's make sure we clear out the undigested food, the things that aren't breaking down properly. Let's make sure they're not getting stuck. For instance, we know that refined sugars and flours often create like a coating over the whole, like your intestine, your intestinal tract has all these little tiny hair-like finger-like proje projections that allow more surface area to absorb more nutrients, right? If they get gummed up with white flours, white sugars, things like that, then your absorption rate of whatever you're taking in, whether it's food or supplements, is gonna be pretty low. And so we knew we wanted to remove anything that had built up on the walls of the digestive tract. Um, we also knew we wanted to make sure the peristalsis was happening well with the bowels so that he was going regularly. And I remember growing up, I would go to the doctor and they'd say, are you regular? And I'd say, regular meaning what? And they said, well, regular for you. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I go. That's right, right. Um, it wasn't until later that I realized really regularity would be meal in, meal out, meal in, meal out. There should be this constant moving through and mine has always been sluggish. And so um, we decided we would do something about that. So we did a cleanse and the one we chose is really gentle. That's why I like it. So Comfort Cleanse is our Young Living product that we use. Um, I used to do another one. If you were around me several years ago, we did a cleansing product called Experience, which was not quite so gentle. If you had to have an experience, we knew what you meant. Uh, you had to get there fast. Um, so Comfort Cleanse, seems very gentle like whenever I use it it just helps with regularity it's just helping the peristalsis of the bowel it also has a lot of nutrition in it so it just kind of nourishes that sort of whole area um, and then ICP is a really high fiber probiotic prebiotic um, and has a lot of great like sweet fennel but it has oats and psyllium and flaxseed um, so this one is, its job is to scrub off material that has built up in there. And so um, I just add a little bit of this to my smoothie every day for uh, my cleansing time. And I do a cleanse every fall. So I'm doing one again right now. And then Essential Zyme is one of their digestive enzymes. So another issue here is as we get older, our digestive enzymes deplete. But the problem is it's not just age now that's doing it, it's the processed foods that we take in seem to be depleting our natural enzymes earlier in life. And so more and more people are having trouble having enough digestive enzymes to break down our food effectively to really absorb and make use of the great nourishment we're putting in our bodies. So we might be eating really well, but we may not be breaking it down in a way that we can actually make effective use of the nutrients. So um, so essential zyme is sort of a full complex uh, fats, proteins, carbs. It sort of breaks down everything. We have another one called essential zymes four that's really great to have with your meals. So I often just take it just before a meal and it helps break things down. So we did that with Nate. We just decided, okay, let's do a cleanse. Then um, he started to feel a little better. We got him onto like the naturopath wanted us to take collagen every day. She wanted us to do bone broth. <laughs> and um, we did, we, we were faithful. We put our bones in our crock pot and we did that stuff. Um, but I just found it was hard to stay consistent. It was hard to just keep making bone broth all the time. So um, when we found out that this collagen is the one she recommended, the Organica. There was one other brand, but I can't think of what it is, but this one's pretty um, cost-effective at Costco. So I, this is the one I apply. And she told us to take this because it would start to repair those cell walls. So we want them to knit back together. She said, you'll also probably see benefits to hair, skin, and nails 
So what you see on the outside, it's also doing on the inside to help repair um, those tissues. So we really wanted that. So Nathan was on collagen for a long, long time, a couple years, I think, and I've been on it for a few years as well. And then um, more recently, we went and got him checked. Um, we have, so here's our health team. We have a few different angles here. My GP is really great at ordering the blood work and will work with my naturopath to get the blood work to her as well. And my um, naturopath is really great at going line by line through our blood work and really explaining what's going on. And one of the things you've got to know about blood work is often, like all through my years of chronic fatigue, I was told, oh, your blood work's normal. We don't know what's wrong with you. We don't know why you're not feeling better. Um, and so when I went to the naturopath, it was interesting because she said, normal doesn't mean optimal. And they've been stretching and broadening those ranges over years because that's where most people are. So because most people are between these numbers, it gets called normal. But really the optimal spot would be much narrower. And so she tries to move us to optimal and that's where we've really found some change. Um, so with Nathan too, we use oils every day and um, I was having him do immune oils every day. Um, and you can just look at my immune oil protocol. Um, and then uh, he was also doing some hormone support. Uh, testosterone levels were likely a little low for him. So he's been doing Shutran for a while uh, just to keep those normal male hormones at a good level. And then I do the same with female hormone levels with Progestins Plus. We used, both used Endoflex, which works for the whole endocrine system. We just put it over our thyroid. And uh, we both were doing adrenal support, just putting it straight on the adrenals. And our favorite adrenal roller would be like clove, rosemary, and nutmeg. 10 drops each, top up a 10 mil roller with a carrier oil and just put it over the adrenal glands, which sit right on top of the kidneys. So we do that every day. Um, I do it twice a day. Uh, I think he was just a once a day guy. So we were just kind of working on different systems of the body to see if we could get them back in shape. But back to the gut. So um, we have a naturopath who was watching our blood work uh, that was ordered by our GP because then it's covered. Um, and then we have a chiropractor who also does applied kinesiology and I find him very, very helpful because he can muscle test to see which foods our body weakens to. And then we can come home and take them out for a while and go, okay, am I feeling better? Are those the right foods, right? And we always found it bang on. <laughs> like I got the pinprick test for food allergies and my whole arm just blew up. There was no clarity at all from that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we cut all the foods that we were told to cut and we've been doing it a long time. And if you've cooked for Nathan at camp, you know he had quite a list to avoid and mine's longer. So um, so we're used to not having dairy, gluten, corn, soy, peanuts. Actually, all the top inf inflammatory foods were exactly what our lists were. And so we were testing exactly what you would expect. If you eat these foods, they seem to cause inflammation in certain systems. So in a low system where our digestive system wasn't optimally working, we couldn't handle those foods. So basically, uh, I have a blog on that if you wanna look more for information about uh, what those seven foods are and what we swapped out. Um, and we really did find great swaps. Like we have not been suffering. We love the food we eat. In fact, I think Nathan's gonna keep eating that way at home. Um, since that's how I cook for me anyway. And then, uh, you know, he can just experiment when he's at a friend's or out. But when we were at uh, Dr. Millet's, our chiropractor, when we were there um, not too long ago, maybe before the summer, he tested for leaky gut. And he said, yeah, you do have leaky gut. And then he said, let's see if this supplement will fix it. And he put this supplement on his... Um, tummy to test and it strengthened. And so we were like, oh. So he said, um, the collagen we've been taking has L-glutamine in it, but it also has other amino acids that can sometimes, Nathan was getting canker sores all the time. And so what's the one that, so there's l glut oh, it's arginine. So arginine can deplete your L-glutamine and 
actually was creating a problem with canker sores for Nathan. So that's why we had gone in was, what do we do about the canker sores? So, um, yeah, so we ended up getting him on L-glutamine and after just the summer, uh, what, three, four, five months on that, um, all of a sudden his gut has tested strong, no more leaky gut, and uh, he has no more problems with foods. So that is Nathan happy and feeling well, and that's kind of the path we took. So um, my problems persist, but that would be a different video. I still have, so my leaky gut is testing well, um, the part where I'm working now is my small intestine seems to be having problems with an overgrowth of candida again because I had let sugar creep back into my diet and my body does not like that. And um, they're wondering if I have bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine as well, known as SIBO. So I'm working on those two now. Um, and yeah, there's lots of things we can do. Just know this. I... I'm on a team of people, 100,000 families, who've been working at different things that come up in our family life, different health issues, and we don't believe in dead ends. We hit dead ends medically all the time, but we don't believe in dead ends. We believe there's always things we can try. And so um, we have tried many things. We can probably shorten your, <laughs> shorten your experiments uh, if you wanna chat, but um, yeah, there's always things we can be doing to help our body to do what it's supposed to do and work the way it's supposed to work. So let's keep learning and uh, get our bodies into the thrive zone where we're in healing mode and no longer under constant stress uh, from different pathogens, from different um, low functioning systems in our body that just need support. Uh, let's, let's take it on. Let's work on it and uh, we can do better. So um, let me know how I can help. I'm happy to walk alongside you in your journey as you figure out things and I'm always up for a self-care conversation. So uh, get in touch if you want to talk more. Okay, have a good day. Now I gotta figure out how to end this.